Now, the closer you can get that, the, the new audience aligned to yours, the more successful it could be. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Strategy Show. I'm Simon Severino, your host. This episode is brought to you by The Strategy Sprints. The Strategy Sprints does exactly one thing, strategy in sprints. Strategy means improving your monthly revenue, making it better and predictable. In sprints means in fast execution cycles that give your team the chance to celebrate progress every week so that they get more energy for the next sprint. I am super excited. Every week we try to find people who are leading their field. And this time we have here again, Marco Morandis. Hi, Marco. Hey, how are you doing? I'm so pumped that you are here because I want to talk one specific strategy to grow your business and it is collaborations. So mm -hmm. right now many people are thinking, should I, should I do LinkedIn ads or Facebook ads? But that's all expensive. Should I, should I build my own podcast? It takes years and it's expensive. But there is one thing you can do, collaborate with others. And that can be very cheap and very fast and very effective. And you have lots of experience uh, about that. What's your take on collaborations? Uh, I think collaborations are extremely powerful. They're, under, they're also underutilized, I think, because they, they take a little bit of effort and they take collaborating with people that aren't necessarily invested in your business's outcome. There's a risk there, but the upside, I think, is huge. So um, one... The, uh, the structure of a collaboration makes a lot of sense. You have an audience, you have your own audience or community, and another business has their audience and community. Sometimes there's an overlap, sometimes there isn't much. But doing a little bit of work to say, let's build a product together, let's do an experience together, let's um, co-sponsor some event together, what that does is it puts all of your branding, all of your work, all of your product knowledge and experience in front of somebody else's audience. Now, the closer you can get that, the, the new audience aligned to yours, the more successful it could be. Now, the thing that I've seen is people assume that doing a brand collaboration or any collaboration with anybody else is actually putting their own brand at risk. And I think that's... Um, completely false. It's the reality of it is there are the things that do well will be picked up and the things that don't do well will disappear. And we see that all the time across multiple industries. I know last week when I was here, we talked about music. Well, I would ask you, Simon, what are the best storytellers that you know? You may already have the answer. <laughs> to me, the first to come to mind, Gary V. Beyonce, Seth Godin. Okay, well, Seth Godin's a very good storyteller. That's, that's completely true. Um, but yeah, I think some of the best storytellers, I'm not gonna take away from them. I think the other ones that you mentioned are good storytellers too. I think rappers are some of the best storytellers. They captivate you for three to five minutes at a time. They're saying hundreds of words in a very limited window, and you have to listen to it in a way that you're engaged with. The thing that I think makes them most fascinating, though, is that they give up real estate on their albums over and over and over again. If you look at any hip hop album over the last 20 years, you're going to see half of the songs have features on them. And if they don't have a featured artist, that's pretty uncommon. Um, I think J. Cole might be one of the only artists that I've seen that doesn't really do features that commonly. He's a he's a rapper out from North Carolina. But um every kendrick lamar album has 50 percent are features now the thing is nobody knows what's gonna go viral once they drop the product once they drop their product or their album but the on a 10 track album maybe eight of them just disappear they were good but not good enough to really gain popular or popularity and notoriety in the broader culture but the two songs per album that really go crazy they take over they become the thing that represents you as a brand. They're the thing you tour on. They're the things that people will remember 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now. When they look at billboard charts, there you are. Now, another example of this is Jay-Z. Jay-Z has been around since the 90s. I mean, he's been rapping since for sure longer, but his albums started coming out in the 90s. And 
he's been doing 20 track albums for a long time. And in that time, he's discovered Jay-Z, Dame Dash. He's collaborated with Beyonce, then he ended up marrying her. I mean, that is the ultimate collaboration, marrying uh, <laughs> another superstar. But all of this to say is that you've got, um, you've got a catalog, Jay-Z's got a back catalog of hundreds of songs, and we only know five of them. Like I only, I mean, I know a lot, I've listened to his albums, but off the top of my head, I can only give you maybe like five to 10 hits, but they're all the hits. They're everything that was on the radio. They're everything you've seen in the album. They're everything that, or everything you've seen uh, in a movie or you've seen, uh, I don't know, as background music. And like, they're, they're the most popular songs that get the most traction. And everything else kind of fades in the background, which is why collaborations, people being afraid of doing collaborations is a little silly in my opinion. We see it take, takes a long time to develop collaborations for brands that are growing or big already because um, they want to ensure the, that it's represented properly, which makes sense, but they might do one or two a year and they might, they're only going to be with specific caliber people. I say go collaborate with as many people as possible. And if it doesn't do well, it will go away and nobody will remember it. They're not going to say, I remember that one time somebody did this collaboration with Marco and Marco kind of dropped the ball and it was really bad. Well, if it was bad and nobody will have even seen it in the first place. So we're looking for success. And this is actually part of what we talked about previously as well is iterative cycle. The more you can iterate, the more at bats you have, which is basically when you go up to the mound, how many times can you swing? And the more times you swing, the better chance you have of hitting the ball. The better chance you have of hitting the ball, the better chance you have of getting a home run. And this is just, num it's a numbers game. Um, but I think people are very precious with brand because it takes a lot of nuance to, build, to craft it. Um, and yeah, it can, it can be dissolved if you make a series of mistakes that are fatal to your business. But I don't think many people are taking those type of fatal attempts to their business all the time. So uh, I say go for it. Try collaborating with your community with other partners, with other businesses. Um, and you'll learn to see where you have traction, where things are actually starting to pick up. Do you want to make your sales more repeatable and reliable? Do you want to have less volatility and more growth in your revenue per month? At Strategy Sprints, we do only one thing, strategy and sprints. Strategy means having more revenue through a better offer. And sprints means having more energy in your team every week. Check out if your ROI is as high as it is for most service-based and online businesses and startups we work with, which is over 100%. You can see it in just 15 minutes by going to strategysprints.com slash sales and completing our online exercise to know what your ROI would be with our accelerator program. We are ready to sprint. Are you? Why is it so underused? So one thing can be that we think of our brand like it, it would be a brand from 100 years ago that you have to keep safe and stable. Mm -hmm. And so that may be one part. The other part is I think people do not know what the criteria are. Should I collaborate with people who are similar to me or different? Should it be complementary or can there be a... A, a hybrid um, do both brands need to be to have the same maturity or not I guess people don't have the criteria what, what what's your take on this yeah I think uh, and this kind of goes back to again our conversation from before but um, brands should be relatable and feel human and I can tell you that I'm not the same person in this interview as I am with my friends or as I am when I'm playing basketball or when I'm making music or when I'm walking my dog. I'm a different, I'm not, I'm the same person, but I express myself differently in different scenarios. And I think good brands should do, be able to do the same thing as well. So we can see a brand that can be kind of reserved and maybe a more traditional environment. Um, actually, let me just give a great an example that I like, Netflix. When Netflix, was started they were doing they were shipping dvds to your door when i started understanding what netflix was really it was like 2000 
2009, 2008, around there. And they were not a brand. I mean, they were, they have like the Netflix logo, but I was not, a, I didn't care about them. I was still like renting movies at like those red box disposed, like the, the things outside of the grocery store where you can get a, a DVD. Um, but over time now we're seeing on like today, Netflix is making jokes on Twitter. They're making memes. They are producing content. They're, um, they're producing content that they then make memes about on the internet. They are also collaborating and signing uh, actors and actresses to make this content. They're it's a very collaborative experience. They're not just saying, let's go sign, um, let's, let's just go buy this, the rights to this TV show. They're bringing people in, they're bringing directors in and saying, we're gonna give you the keys and you are running, you're building this brand of this new TV show or this new movie on Netflix and you can do this. Um, but what the point of that is that in these different facets, they're expressing themselves differently. The brand doesn't look the same everywhere else. If my mom saw what Netflix, how Netflix engages on Twitter, she wouldn't understand it because that is not her experience of how she uses Netflix, right? So the criteria is essentially, is there a way that's authentic? And that's like, authentic can be a word that um, is, is maybe overused or has some connotation nowadays, but I think authenticity is still valid. If, is, there, is there a way for your brand to be authentic when collaborating with somebody? And a collaboration doesn't necessarily mean being front and center. It means... Um, I'm providing a platform for you to, for another brand to, to say their piece. Um, I'm going to be providing the manufacturing for this or they're like, yeah, okay, I, one of the examples you said, I think was Beyonce, uh, like Beyonce and Adidas. When we talked earlier is Beyonce and Adidas, they did this collaboration, uh, clothing line collaborations, sweat, sweatsuits and whatever. Like that's something that, is it serves both of them very well. One is Beyonce gets her gets a paycheck. She gets to build her brand. She gets to build in the culture. She gets to have more business. And Adidas is it's a very minimal lift for a company like Adidas, who is always manufacturing goods all the time, to partner with somebody at that caliber. Adidas was not the, the front and center of that. <laughs> no one really cared that it, was, it could have been Nike, could have been Puma, but Adidas said, look, you're going to do your thing. We just want to support that. Now that's very, that's, I wouldn't say that's necessarily equal partnership. Somebody's getting more out of that than the other one. Um, and actually that goes the same with, with musician partnerships that we talked about. Um, generally somebody who's featured on an album is getting their shot on somebody else's album. They're not necessarily bringing more value to it. Um, or they're, they're bringing some value to it, but they're, n they're getting more value out of it than they're probably providing to the person they're working with. So I think the, the only criteria is that you don't take a shot that you can't recover from. That's pretty much the only criteria when looking at how do I do collaborations um, and I think just knowing too that the pace of the world around us is moving much faster than it ever has before. So making mistakes will, they'll disappear a lot more quickly than they might have in previous years. They're not sticking around. They don't have the same staying power. They, they don't have as negative an impact to your brand and your business as you might think it does. Um, especially if you're building other systems, relying on brand, don't rely on brand as the sole thing that's going to, carry your business. It is, um, it's jam on your bread or it's like, it's powdered sugar on a piece of cake. It's stuff that tastes good. It's stuff that helps. It, it creates some differentiation, but that alone is not a business. You, that is how you get top of funnel awareness. That is how you can engage your business with other companies and with other, uh, audiences and demographics in authentic and interesting ways, but you still need to have the core of your business functioning. You need to have funnels. You need to have follow-up protocols. You should be improving your product and iterating there. Um, but uh, actually, somebody said this to me. Emmett Shine. Emmett Shine is the founder of Gin Lane Media and now Pattern Brands. He's designed, or his team at Gin Lane has designed pretty much most of the aesthetic of what you'd see in modern direct consumer brands. And when I talked to him, 
he was saying, and I, I love this in that the way that he framed this is that when we build brands, a lot of the time the products aren't as good as the best in class in that industry, but the, they're creating a brand which is an orb. And this orb is a magical orb and you can look into it and you can see this business, but when you touch it, you go inside of it and you're in a world that doesn't really make sense outside of this orb. You're seeing, if you're, if you touch the Glossier orb, you're seeing a uh, specific pastel tone and you're seeing a certain way of engaging and communicating and a passion for makeup and natural beauty. And if you go do that with Warby Parker, you get a different experience. They're completely disconnected. They're their own world, their own universe. And I think that's the, the goal with a brand is that when I engage with this brand, I'm transported into an experience that doesn't look or feel like anything else. And I'm personally affected by that on, on, in a positive way, hopefully. Um, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you have to get it right every single time. It just means that uh, you're experimenting and testing things that continue to build and strengthen that, uh, that, that force field, that experience that's completely unique and, um, and engaging for your customers. Beautiful, Marco. Thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge on this specific growth <laughs> strategy possibility, which is collaboration, because yeah. it's has to do, it's cheap, and um, everybody can do it. It's so under leveraged. So thank you very much. And also thank you for this collaboration. This was also great. Yeah, of so course, it, thank you for having me. Yeah, come back soon, my friend. It was great to have you here. I'm and um, yeah, everybody have a great day and keep rolling. Bye bye. Bye. We all know that working in sprints is better, but how do we know what we should work on? You're in luck because we have a 15 minute exercise that will give you complete clarity on where to take your project next. Go to strategysprints.com slash sales to complete our short exercise and meet one-on-one -on -one with an expert sprint coach to identify your number one bottleneck. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the strategy show. Make sure to like this video below and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with every episode of The Strategy Show. Get daily CEO tips from CEOs for CEOs.